We've got uh, Byron in Columbia. Good afternoon, Byron. Good afternoon to you both. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. I have a couple questions um, about uh, some raised beds that I'm thinking about putting in for our garden. We've been running, raising uh, tomatoes and basil and peppers over the last few years in the same spot. And last year, our uh, plants did not do very well. And someone suggested rotating um, uh, where we plant those. Mm -hmm. So this year I was thinking about doing uh, maybe a, a self-watering or wicking um, raised bed and um, wondered if uh, the compost that you can get from the landfill would be okay to use for that. And um, next year, when I, uh, if I'm successful in this, would I need to rotate the beds or just replenish the soil with new compost? What do you recommend? Well, both. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all of the above. All of yeah, it. <laughs> all that you're talking about is good. The, the fact that you're getting some of this recycled uh, yard waste ground up and composted, that is certainly a good addition, amendment to your soil. So, yes, I would encourage you to use that. Uh, yes, I would certainly encourage you to rotate your crops, but now one thing that most people overlook, they might say, well, I had in this bed last year, with this particular bed, I might have had tomatoes. And then the year before that, I had eggplants, and the year before that, I had Irish potatoes. Uh, and maybe I'll have peppers this year. They've just named four crops, all from the same family, that share diseases. So you're really not getting a true crop rotation for the purpose of uh, controlling diseases because all four of those crops are from the same family. So I would suggest that you have one bed. Um, well, in my beds at home, my beds were 40 feet long, and I had 16 of them at one time, and so I would put tomatoes at the end of every other bed. So I had them numbered, bed one, three, five, seven, the odd-numbered beds on the odd-numbered years. And then on the even-numbered years, I would put tomatoes in two, four, six, and eight on the south end, say, well, then I could rotate, and the next year, on an odd number again, I would rotate the end of the bed to the north end. And so I might be eight years getting back to having either a pepper or a tomato or a eggplant, eggplant or Irish potato. So, and what would you rotate in? in well, in go areas? away. Yeah. You might go to coal crops, and there. are See, when you use cold crops, you've got broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage. Brussels sprouts. And Brussels sprouts. So if you want to do a rotation, don't feel like you can go broccoli one year and cauliflower the next in the same spot. So you go from solanaceae, the tomatoes, peppers, and so forth, one year, and go to the cold crops the next year. And the third year, you might go to the legumes, the beans, butter beans, green beans, snap beans, whatever. Uh, so know your crops, know your, that, that you like. The family. That the family the, names. The family names, So you yeah. could have uh, cucurbits one year, cucumbers one year, and, uh, so, you know, cucumbers, squash, that sort of thing is a rotation but then go to peppers the next year, beans the next year, corn the next year. You know, so that's the way you you manage small areas with rotations. Did I answer your question, Byron? Uh, yes, I think so. And um, just what's your experience with um, self-watering or, or wicking beds? That I've not... Uh, when you say self-watering, you mean having enough amendment there that um, it will draw water from the, the ground up? Um, actually building a um, somewhat of a reservoir in the bottom of it by putting uh, uh, perforated... Um, uh, so a completely artificial situation. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I know that people do that. I 
I've not done it myself, and I can't tell you how well it works in this area. I have some skepticism about how well it would wick up unless you had your uh, a uniform um, amended media, uh, a medium that you could tell it's the same. I, it's... I would have some doubts as to, in our hot, dry summers, how well it would wick up from the bottom. Okay. And I have a question. If you're using the mulch from the landfill and people mm-hmm. are – if if a person puts out insecticide or something on their grass and then cuts up their grass and then throws that in the, the mulch pile, does that have a residue that will stay if you were to use that in your garden? That's, um, that's a good question. Or, or like if they put Roundup in there or something that would, would kill the plants, not necessarily insecticide. but Well, that's another altogether different question, but a good one. So I'll answer those. Byron, I will, um, unless you have another question, I will answer Diana's questions, which are related to your own. That's fine. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Thanks for calling. Now back to your question, Diana. Um, one thing... Uh, I have a friend down in the Florence area who grows fishing worms. And um, he uses fishing worms to clean up toxic spills, actually. And those toxins in the soil, the fishing worms eat their way through the soil and actually consume some of these toxins, which they break down into smaller components and they come back to check on the toxins three months later and there's no sign of them because they've been digested and broken down into uh, less... Redistributed. Right, redistributed and less toxic components. It's not just that the fishing worms consume it and take it somewhere else. No, they consume it, break it down into... And change it. Change it into less toxic conditions. Now, you mentioned... uh, We'll, we'll just say glyphosate. Okay, um, yeah. That's, that's the generic name for all of these products that... that kill weeds and things. Right, that's a systemic kill-it-all type of pesticide, but um, or herbicide, I should say. Um, it is so susceptible to being inactivated by soil. That's why, you know, if you read on the on the container, it says most active or better if used right after a shower or, uh, you know, after a rain, that washes the dust off of the foliage. And they don't even recommend using well water to mix or to dilute glyphosate because it will uh, combine with little uh, suspended particles of clay in In the well the well water. So use pure water and do it after a shower has washed the dust off and when the temperature is below 85 degrees you'll have a much more effective herbicide effect. So it it won't leave a residue so that mulch is then good to to use. From that standpoint uh, glyphosate is a very safe one because it combines with soil and is inactivated just instantly. How about that? See, you learn something new every day. <laughs> so, and then the other, most other toxin, toxic uh, substances that might be sprayed or applied in the compost pile, it is really active with fishing worms and other microbes that will break down uh, these components and inactivate many of the toxins. 